Hello everyone, welcome back. So, last time we have seen what is an air fuel mixture. How, why is it required? What are the limits of the air fuel mixture that are permissible to be inducted inside the combustion chamber? And what are the different requirements of the air fuel mixture when the engine is operating under different riding conditions? So that was about the mixture. Now we are going to see how that mixture is going to be formed. The very basic component which leads to the formation of an air fuel mixture is the carburetor. The main function of the carburetor is to supply a pre-mixed air fuel mixture which we call as charge now let us see what is a carburetor a very basic representation of the carburetor is this so you can see that air is being taken in the chamber okay this chamber is nothing but your carburetor you will find that where one is written cross-sectional area is different where 2 is written the cross-sectional area is again different and at point 2 the cross-sectional area is a little bit smaller so and then you have point number 3 which is the fuel chamber then you have point number 4 which is the pressure equalizing pipe then you have point number 5 which is the pre-calibrated orifice you have point number six which supplies the fuel and you have point number seven which is the throttle okay this is an example of a carburetor the previous one is the diagrammatic representation this is an actual photograph of a carburetor so number one is inlet <coughs> the point from which air is drawn inside the carburetor okay when this air comes it flows through section 1 through the inlet and when it comes to section 2 due to the restricted cross section at section 2 there is a drop in pressure there is a drop in pressure so pressure at section 2 is less as compared to pressure at point number 3 which is the fuel chamber because of this difference in pressure the fuel starts to flow into the venturi and as the pressure is low as compared to point as compared to that at point 3 expansion of fuel takes place now the fuel is in a liquid phase we all know that when a liquid will expand it will turn into gaseous form but since there is no direct practical application of heat in order to vaporize the fuel over here the fuel does not get converted into directly gaseous vapors instead it gets converted into a form of spray to imagine and understand this phenomena in a better manner consider a bottle of perfume that we that we use or a bottle of a deodorant spray that we use okay or a bottle of in that we use to clean the surfaces in all these three applications you will observe that the liquid the fragrant or the cleaning liquid is present inside the bottle and it is in a liquefied form okay let us consider the bottle of perfume as soon as you compress the nozzle what happens the atmospheric pressure gets connected with the pressure which is present inside the bottle okay now you will find that in case of deodorant spray cans it is written this is a pressurized container please do not puncture even after use okay so we understand from this that the pressure inside the can of that deodorant of perfume spray or perfume is greater than that of the atmosphere so as soon as you compress the nozzle to spray on your body or on your clothes 
whatever liquid is present inside it comes out in the form of a spray which has finely distributed particles of the perfume or the deodorant, deodorant spray or the cleaning liquid okay so as soon as there is a drop in pressure this liquid it expands and converts into a spray the similar phenomena happens inside a carburetor because the air is made to pass through a restricted cross section a certain drop in pressure takes place and this drop in pressure is less than the pressure which is present in chamber 3 because of this pressure drop the liquid fuel starts to flow from 3 towards point 2 and in doing so because of the drop in pressure it expands and is converted into a form of spray or mist or atomization takes place we may say because of this that likelihood of the fuel being mixed with the stream of air homogeneously increases because of this a homogeneous or a uniform mixture of air and fuel is formed which has a higher probability of complete combustion this is nothing but the principle of carburation okay so we have seen inlet the next is the venturi throat the restricted cross section is called as the venturi or throat three is the floating chamber where fuel is present okay you will see that a float is present and direction of fuel is shown from the petrol tank or the fuel tank when the fuel will be filled in the floating chamber to a predetermined level the float will rise and block the passage from where further influx of the fuel will stop and point number four is pressure equalizing passage when the pressure drop takes place to a larger extent some amount of air is let in into the float chamber to equalize the then fifth is the calibrated orifice which will meter and regulate the amount of fuel which is supplied from the floating chamber to the venturi throat six is the fuel discharge tube which is fuel discharge tube which is the extension of the calibrated orifice and it serves the responsibility of taking the fuel from the floating chamber through the calibrated orifice to the venturi seven is the throttle plate this is the component which determines the amount of air that will be drawn through the carburetor during the suction stroke or in the cycle and the amount of air it determines how much will be the pressure drop at venturi and the pressure drop at venturi it determines what amount of fuel will be mixed or will be drawn from the floating chamber and hence mix with air and form the charge okay so this is principle and the basic operation of a carburetor now let us go further working principle of the carburetor is based upon the vaporization of fuel which causes mixture of air and fuel <clears throat> again over here you can see that passage of air is shown at d1 with velocity v and air comes out at d2 okay a1 is the cross-sectional area at inlet a2 is the cross-sectional area at the venturi h is the drop in pressure you can see that there is a pressure drop when you compare the inlet and the venturi pressure at inlet is p1 and pressure at venturi is p2 so the drop in pressure delta p is given by p1 and p1 minus p2 and this drop in pressure it results in the flow of fuel from the fuel tank or the floating chamber to the carburetor now you might have experienced this phenomena although you are having fuel in the petrol tank still the vehicle does not start the reason for this is the pressure has been locked vapor locking phenomena is there which we might discuss further on which has taken place because of this the pressure becomes equal in the venturi and the fuel tank because of which no fuel is going to flow to the venturi because no fuel is flowing no mix 
mixture formation takes place and hence combustion cannot take place and the vehicle will not start or the engine will not start rather. So what do we do in such cases? We simply open the fuel tank cap or the lid. Okay, we bring the fuel into turbulence by shaking the vehicle. Because of this, what happens? Air surges into the fuel tank, exerts an external pressure on the fuel because of which the pressure of the fuel increases in the fuel tank as compared to that at the venturi and then if you try, try to crank up the engine or self start your engine it will definitely start so this again shows that because of a drop in pressure or a difference in pressure between the venturi and the fuel tank the fuel is going to flow and as we have already seen by by means of an example of a deodorant spray can or, or a perfume bottle this drop in pressure results in expansion of the liquid fuel and converts it into a form of spray or mist or it atomizes it so this is nothing but once again the principle of carburation now let us go on further air fuel ratio we have already seen that different driving conditions they demand different air fuel ratio like we are seeing at the bottom of the screen idle that is idling partial load which you can equate with cruising and full load which is the power mode okay so in all these three conditions you are going to have different requirements from the air fuel mixture either you will need a rich mixture or a lean mixture would do the trick for you or you might be satisfied with a stoichiometrically or a chemically correct mixture now for all different driving conditions it is not practical to have different carburetors a single carburetor should be able to suffice or should suffice for the supply of different air fuel mixtures for different driving conditions so only one carburetor should be able to do all the supply of air fuel mixture depending upon the different driving conditions let us see how this might happen this is idle <clears throat> okay we have already seen or we already know that during idling the engine rpm is low hence the piston reciprocates at a lesser speed because of which low pressure is developed upon the exhaust gases which results in a larger amount of residual exhaust gases inside the combustion chamber thereby causing an hindrance to incoming charge during the next cycle which results in the loss of engine consistency and com sustenance of combustion for this we need to ensure that fuel is continuously supplied now we know during idling no one pulls the accelerator lip behind okay that is throttling is at zero almost so even when throttling is zero you need to ensure that fuel is being supplied into the carburetor now purpose this purpose is served by the idling screw or the idling port you all might have experienced this okay you can increase or decrease your idling rpm if you ride a bike where is where the kick is situated you have got a small screw which you can rotate in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction and depending upon the setting of it you can increase the rpm why the rpm increases or decreases because it regulates the opening of the throttle and the subsequent supply of the fuel to the carburetor now you will see in this figure or the image for idling that whatever fuel is coming it is not being supplied to the venturi it indicates that the drop in pressure that is developed is not sufficient to draw up the fuel and atomize it and prepare an air prepare a air fuel mixture so instead of supplying fuel to the venturi it is bypassed and supplied after the throttle valve or after the throttle plate by means of an idling screw this ensures that even when the throttle position is at zero or during idling condition some or the other amount of fuel is being supplied through the carburetor to the combustion chamber in order to sustain combustion and keep the engine running now next is partial load in partial load we mean by partial load that some amount of throttle is open generally we take that three-fourth amount of amount of throttle is open now when this happens the throttle will open required drop of pressure will take place at the venturi and it will draw the required amount of fuel and hence proper mixing of air fuel mixture will take place and no need to supply through the idling screw okay 
the next is the full load we know that apart from the required mixture an additional amount of fuel is to be supplied in order to sustain the full load operation of the engine for this we have an acceleration pump you can see there is a small impression of a cam shaped object attached with the throttle plate okay so as the throttle valve will open completely this cam will move and it will actuate the acceleration pump this acceleration pump will supply the fuel directly to the venturi without taking into consideration much the drop in pressure this will help to serve the problem to rectify the problem of the rich mixture needed during full load because as the throttle will open this acceleration pump will operate and it will supply additional amount of fuel to the carburetor in order to produce the rich mixture that is required okay so these are the different configurations or arrangements in a carburetor which are incorporated in order to ensure that the same carburetor is capable of supplying different air fuel mixtures required during different mode of engine operation now let us go on a bit further and see drawbacks of the carburetor system what are the advantages it is a simple system less number of components only a carburetor is required no additional elements are required significantly and it is a cost effective method but there are certain drawbacks let us look into them the first is ice formation now it does not actually mean the ice that we eat or we consume or we use commercially ice formation it means that the passages of fuel they get blocked because of cold atmospheric conditions and condensation of fuel and form condensation of water droplets that are present in the air because of the humidity vapor locking when additional amount of fuel is vaporized it goes ahead and blocks the passage of the fuel creates a pressure lock and hinder creates a hindrance for further fuel to come in this we have already explained that vapor locking takes place if you open the tank of the fuel turbulence bring the fuel in turbulence by shaking the fuel tank additional pressure will be exerted and this vapor these vapors will be driven forward thereby releasing the pressure lock backfiring we all know what backfiring is the kick comes back because of back pressure if some blockages take place and the jets in the carburetor are blocked because of some carbon deposition or some additional external impurities then air fuel separation problem if there are more than one cylinder that are needed to be supplied with the air fuel mixture the separation of the mixture becomes a little bit problematic over here then performance relies heavily on gravity and vaporization of property of the fuel that's this is really very obvious to understand if the fuel is very dense and does not vaporize properly then the carburetion will prove insufficient to produce the required type of air fuel mixture non uniform distribution of fuel air mixture from cylinder to cylinder this happens in case of a multi cylinder engine let us see this is an example of a three cylinder inline engine you can see that from the right side air and gasoline mixture is being given to the inlet manifold the drops of the fuel are depicted like large gasoline droplets as they encounter a bend because of their density accumulation of liquid gasoline takes place over there and it is not possible to supply the required air fuel mixture to every cylinder every time this is the major drawback of a carburetor carburetion system okay thank you very much